What is up, guys? Welcome to our Week 8 Team Builder for the GPC. This week, we are taking on the Borussia Dawn fan, coached by Lars L. Scizor. If you don't know him, go and check him out. His link will be in the description down below on this video, as well as the battle, which brings me kind of into explaining why I'm doing just a Team Builder. And the reason is, well, there's two reasons. The first is that I made the team earlier today, so I wanted it to be as fresh as possible in my mind, so I could really explain to you guys what each set was and why I decided to bring them. And the other reason is that I'm probably going to be live comming the game and by the time you're watching this We will already have had the game obviously because I don't want to reveal any information to my opponent about my team before the game so Yeah, um, we it's gonna be a longer episode for the match itself Which means that I don't want to take up even more time on that episode by having a team builder at the very beginning so Let's get into the team real quick. Lars has an extremely threatening team. Uh, it'll come up on your right. It is made up of Excadrill, Crobat, Tyranitar, Mega Charizard Y, Slowking, Venusaur, Dragonite, Deancey, regular Deancey, Halucha, and Pikachu. So Pikachu isn't too relevant. He has brought it to one game though, uh, one of the games that he lost, but I uh, can actually put in some work surprisingly. Luckily we have a decent team to work around it, so it's not too bad. So let's start things off here. The first Pokemon that I actually put into the team builder, this is ordered in its usual order from least interesting to most interesting sets. So um, I uh, I put in Hippowdon first into the team builder because this is the first Pokemon that I saw put in the most work against him. And specifically because if you run a max special defense set in the, su in the sand, I was about to say in the sun, as you can see my opponent has two forms of weather being uh, Ty Tyranitar and Charizard Y. He can run Rain Dance on stuff as well, but in terms of abilities, he has Sandstream and Drought going for him. So I wanted a Pokemon that could lead off against nearly any member of my opponent's team and set up rocks. Why do I want to set up rocks so badly? Because, not for the chip damage, the real reason I want to get rocks up against Lars is so that I can see his items. What do I mean by this? Excadrill. If it comes in on rocks, only takes 3%. If he doesn't have leftovers, he's probably more of an offensive Excadrill. Crobat, same thing. If I don't see Black Sludge, probably offensive. Titar, if I don't see leftovers, he's either Choppel or he's offensive. Uh, if he uh, brings in Slowking and he doesn't recover any leftovers after the rocks, he's probably Assault Vested or Expert Belt with like 3 attacks and, and Slack Off. Uh, if he's... Uh, Dragonite just breaks the scale, that's that's huge on its own, that I don't even care what his item is. Deancey, it's probably gonna run leftovers, but uh, it's still good to know. Halucha, that thing takes 12% on switch, which is really really nice for a sub Swords Dance Halucha, it's always good to get damage off on that thing. So that's, that's pretty much my logic behind it, is that rocks are extremely important, more so for revealing items than they are for getting damage off. Obviously on the Crobat, on the Charizard Y, we get some pretty clutch damage, the Dragonite, but the big thing uh, is revealing items. So I want to get up rocks as quickly as possible. So I went with a sp fully Spadef set. Why did I go with this set? Because a timid Charizard Y in the sand cannot two hit KO me with Fire Blast outside of a crit or a burn. That means I can slack off stall it. It can go for as many Fire Blasts as it wants. I will always be able to slack off the damage. I will run him out of Fire Blasts. I have a backup for Charizard Y because it, ex it is extremely threatening to my team. You guys will see it later on, but the big thing here is I can slack off his Fire Blast damage because of Leftovers, as long as he doesn't have Rocks up, because otherwise with two high rolls he could 2 it KO me, but other than that we're okay. We do have Earthquake here for Excadrill, for uh, Tyranitar. Deancey, it's nice for all of them. Pikachu as well. We have Rock Slide on there for Crobat and Charizard Y uh, to be able to... It, it does knock out Charizard Y. I calced it. Uh, Rock Slide does, I think, min 99.6. So unless I get the absolute lowest roll, so that means a 1 in 15 chance, uh, then I'm knocking out his, uh, his Charizard Y guaranteed. Unless he ran some HP on it, and then he'll be able to live. But then he's not switching in on anything at that point, so... It's fine. Uh, Earthquake, of course, being able to 2-hit KO the Excadrill regardless of HP investment. Uh, being able to 2-3-hit uh, to three hit KO the Tyranitar, again, depending on investment. Uh, so very nice. I mean, just overall, uh, your standard Hippo set. Earthquake, 
uh, rock move, stealth rocks, and slack off, except I'm going with a max speed F set because Hippowdon's defense is already good enough. This is Glorious, the newest member to the team. First time he'll be making an appearance, I believe. And uh, next Pokemon we have here is Tweety. So why are we bringing Zapdos? Because I've brought it to pretty much every game at this point. Zapdos checks a lot of his slower Pokemon very well. The fact that it gets access to Heat Wave and it can hit uh, Venusaur in the sun is really important because I don't have anything else for Venusaur. If that, I do have one thing potentially, but he has to be outside of the sun for it to function. So I'm thinking um, Heat Wave, uh, come in on rocks, be able to take the Sludge Bomb, Heat Wave him and knock him out in the sun. Just get rid of him. If he decides to bring a Life Orb set. I'm pretty sure Venusaur is coming to this game. It wouldn't make much sense to me if it doesn't. I do understand that I have two Psychic types and an extremely powerful Fire Wall Breaker. But Venusaur in the sun does a lot of damage to me. A an extreme amount of damage. Like, it's it's not comparable, guys. There's, there's no holding that thing back when it's in the sun. So I have to be extremely careful with it. So I decided to run Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, and Roost. This is my main check to Excadrill mainly, but also a backup check to Howlucha, because I'm more expecting Howlucha to come than Excadrill. He's brought Excadrill to every single game, and I feel like this is the one game where he wouldn't bring it, just because it doesn't have an amazing matchup. I have a Hippowdon, I have a Zapdos, I have a Yuxi. It's extremely hard for Excadrill to function under those conditions when I have that many Pokemon that just stop it dead in its tracks. Yes, he can Swords Dance, but eventually his Sand will run out, and he has Sun as well. So if I bring, like, uh, Choice Scarf, Max Speed, I don't know, uh, could be anything, uh, even a uh, just a Yuxi with um, Hidden Power Ground or uh, Zapdos with Charty Berry, for example, which is why we're running it, uh, I can just knock out his Excadrill with a Heat Wave. So I can't see his Excadrill coming to this game. Titar, absolutely. Tyranitar has to come. It just has to. It does too much work to me. But Excadrill, eh, it's more iffy. So I decided, let's use this as a check to Excadrill, backup check to Halucha. It's more of a check to Halucha technically, because I'm pretty sure he's going to bring that against me. It also does very well in this matchup. If he gets up a Swords Dance behind a sub, I pretty much lose. Unless Zapdos is here. And I can Thunderbolt or Volt Switch on it to break the sub. And Charty Berry allows me to live at Stone Edge. Yes, that's right. Halucha gets Stone Edge, guys. If you didn't know this, I'm glad I watched um, a replay of one of my opponent's matches. Not one of my opponents, sorry. One of my friend's matches, uh, Immortal Mets, um, who helped me with this team, by the way. I just want to give a huge shout out real quick to the uh, the front office for the GPC for me. Uh, mostly Dom and Mens, they gave great, great suggestions. One of which I'm actually using. Uh, two of which, actually, this is the last two Pokemon, so uh, this could work out pretty well if, uh, if those two come through, hopefully. Uh, so huge shout outs to them. Thank you guys so much for helping me out. But getting back to the point, I watched one of Mens's uh, matches in a league that he's in. Uh, his week one match, he brought uh, Mega Pinsir with Swords Dance, Return, I think Quick Attack, and Stone Edge to beat a Zapdos. And I saw that and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. There's This thing gets Stone Edge. And I had the same th thought process when I saw Halucha on my opponent's team. I immediately rushed to the team builder to see, does Halucha actually get any rock coverage? And it does. So I decided to pack Charty Berry. This also allows me to take Excadrill's plus two rock slide with the investment that we have, 248 HP, 116 defense. The 112 uh, in special attack is actually to be able to uh, hit the Slowking extremely hard. I think it's actually to Oko the Venusaur in the sun after a stealth rock hit. Like a guaranteed Oko's. Minroll is uh, is 87.5 if I'm not mistaken. So that's why that's there. Uh, and of course the 32 speed, you're going to see a, a reoccurring theme with a lot of my Pokemon, especially my base 100s. They all hit this 244 speed. What does this do? It outspeeds Tyranitar, unless he's Scarfed. So that means that I have three Pokemon on my team, four actually, that reveal if his T-Tar is Scarfed. And that is very valuable information because that makes Hippowdon a switch every single time to Tyranitar. There's virtually nothing he can do to uh, to Hippowdon because we're max special defense. So even if he carries Ice Beam, it's going to do nothing. 
and I can just slack off the damage. So that's extremely important. That's why I'm running this speed on almost all of my Pokemon. The next Pokemon we have here is 4chan, our Mega Gardevoir. We're running max speed, timid. So yeah, only three have that 244 speed, sorry. Uh, the reason I'm running max speed timid on Gardevoir is because if it comes down to a Mega Gardevoir versus Mega Charizard Y situation, I do not want to lose because I didn't put enough speed on my Gardevoir and he just fire blasts me and wins. I want it to at least come down to a speed tie and I'm able to side shock him and knock him out. So that's why uh, I decided to go max speed timid. This also allows me to come in on Excadrill, a weakened Excadrill, for example, in sand if he brings it and be able to knock, well, not knock him out. Well, if he's weakened, yes. But the main thing is I'm going to be tracing his Sand Rush, and if he's adamant, I'm always faster than him. So I gain his Sand Rush, we outspeed him, and we Hyper Voice him. We go back down to our original speed as soon as we Mega Evolve, but that's fine. It's, it's okay. Uh, as long as we're able to outspeed the Excadrill on that given turn. And Lars should know that tra Trace into Sand Rush is a thing, and I can just click Focus Blast, but I'm not bringing Focus Blast, because Focus Blast only hits one Pokemon on his team. Uh, well, two. Tyranitar and Excadrill. That's it. Hyper Voice already hits Tyranitar, so I don't need to worry about that. And like I said before, Excadrill, more than likely not coming. I'm pretty sure it's not coming. If I eat my words and he brings that Excadrill, I'll actually be happy. Because I have a couple of checks to it. So that's one less thing I have to worry about on his team. Uh, if he doesn't bring the D-Knight also, that would be really cool because I don't have a very good answer to that thing. But anyway, we're rocking Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, Protect, and Taunt. Why am I rocking Protect? Because he has a lot of potential Scarfers, um, mainly Titar. Um, also, I guess he could run Hellucha Scarfed. He could run D Knight Scarfed if he wants to to outspeed pretty much all of my team. He could like a adamant Max Attack Scarf um, Dragonite is extremely scary to me. Like it, it, that thing can plow through me <laughs> if it, it if it's under the right conditions. So he might even bring that. So what I decided to do is run Protect, and also to be able to stall out some Sun or Sand. If it comes down to the last turn of Sun, and I'm able to stall it out with Protect before I have to go for a Psy Shock against his Charizard Y, I'll do that, because then he won't hit me as hard with Fire Blast. He won't be able to Oko me at all. Even if I take two Stealth Rock hits, he will not be able to knock me out from that range. So even if I lose the Speed Tie, I have two chances. I can Psy Shock twice, and if I win one of the two Speed Ties, I can knock out his Charizard, which is amazing. And finally, Taunt is here because if it comes to the point where I decide to lead with Gardevoir and my opponent leads with, let's say, Deancey, I want to be able to prevent rocks. It's very important that I keep rocks off my side because if you guys noticed, Zapdos doesn't have Defog. So, in fact, what I'm going to do real quick, I'm just going to change this to Static because it's a little more viable, because we don't have Defog, so we can run this set. So that's pretty much why I'm running Taunt, is to prevent rocks. And also, uh, if I just see that um, for some reason his Crobat is extremely slow, it has like fully a full HP investment, and he didn't speed creep my Gardevoir, I can Taunt it to prevent a Defog. Uh, also the Slow King, if it wants to slack off while it's poisoned or burned, I can Taunt that thing, force it to switch out on a Hyper Voice. Uh, which will pretty much nuke something on his team. Uh, if I want to taunt the Dragonite to prevent it from Dragon Dancing up on me, uh, if I want to uh, taunt the Pikachu for whatever reason, like anything that I'm faster than or uh, I feel might benefit from me going for taunt on, I will go for taunt. And I really like taunt Mega Gardevoir. It really works in, in League, I feel, and it's probably one of my favorite moves on Mega Gardevoir right now. Uh, it hasn't worked too well so far, but I know the potential that it has. We faced a Clefable... Uh, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, I think it was last week, uh, and that could have come in very much handy. Like, you f you force a taunt, you force a Pokemon that can't really hit you too hard to switch out on one of the most powerful special moves coming at your uh, coming at your face. It's really annoying to have to deal with that, so that's why I really like this Pokemon with, uh, with taunt. Next up, we have Rob, our mean shell. We've brought to pretty much almost every game. Uh, also, you'll notice that there are two Pokemon here that are not coming, that came to nearly every game so far. Uh, the first is Blastoise, and the second is Klefki. We've brought Klefki every single match since we've had it, 
and we brought Blastoise every single match this season with Rob's record combined. So those are two Pokemon that he might be expecting to come that I'm not bringing. But Rob is coming this match, and I'm running a, that's right, you, see, you guys see that right here, Itemless Mean Shao. Why? Last move, Acrobatics. Do I need a Life Orb? No. Why do I want to boost Acrobatics? Because I want something to hit Venusaur outside of the sun. If he decides that that's his best switch at any given moment, and I can catch it off guard and acrobatics it after a drain punch, it will drop. It will instantly drop if it's not defensive. So that's why we're doing that. U-turn is to be able to get out against the Slowking, go out into Zapdos or Gardevoir, either get the Regenerator or force it out with a Volt Switch, get it right out of there, Just keep switching around on my team. That's going to be the idea. It's going to be create a Volturn core with Rob and Tweety, uh, force him into his Pokemon like Slowking, uh, just just get his walls weakened slowly, but surely get his walls weakened mainly Deancey and Slowking Those are the biggest issues for me So if I can get those things lower and lower and lower through you turning and bolt switching, I'm fine with that Oh, we're also running Stone Edge. Of course you guys can figure it out. He has a Mega Charizard Y I want something that's faster than it and can knock it out Simple as that. That's that's all I need this for is to knock out the the Charizard if I find out that his uh, T-Tar is scarfed um, then we can actually, we can actually switch, this, this is the important thing, guys. You guys see the, uh, the EVs down there? 248 HP. That's right, 248 HP on a mean shell. 44 attack, 216 speed with a jolly nature. Why am I running so little attack? Because two of my moves are specifically tailored to take on, uh, Pokemon that are quad weak to them. So I don't need as much attack investment to be able to knock out those Pokemon. Titar automatically goes down to a Drain Punch after rocks unless he's fully physically defensive. That's the only way he lives it. And if he is, then he's not Scarfed or Banded and he's not as much of a threat. I can just go into, um, into a Poudon. So uh, I might U-turn on it the first time just to gauge to see if it is Scarfed. And the, the great thing is that with this EV, uh, that with this HP investment, I can switch Mean Shao into Tyranitar, which is something that you normally never do, because without the HP investment, Stone Edge plus Rocks plus um, Sand from a Banded Titar kills automatically. It's it's an instant knockout. But with the HP investment, we can switch in on it. We can gauge the damage that it deals to us, force it out with a Fighting move, and you turn out. And that is a lot of valuable information all on one switch right there, guys. Because if I find out that that T-Tar is banded because I switch into it, then everything else on my team except for Hippowdon outspeeds it. And that is huge. That is so much valuable information and so much momentum for me. Because if I know that Entei outspeeds it, great. If I know that Yuxi outspeeds it, Ooh, he's gonna have a hard time with Yuxi. If I know that Zapdos outspeeds it, I'm gonna Volt Switch every single time. I'm not forced to hard switch out against it. So that's the important thing. That's why I have Mean Chow. I need one single switch that can force out his Tyranitar every single time. And that is Mean Chow. So that's why we're bringing this set. Again, no item, just because I want that boosted acrobatic specifically for the Venusaur. Uh, and if it comes down to it, I think that Acrobatics is actually... No, it's not stronger than U-Turn on Sloking. I'm definitely going to be uh, U-Turning. And, uh, oh, fun fact. Psyshock from no special attack investment Sloking doesn't knock us out from full. That's right. That's what this HP does. It allows us to even live super effective hits. We might even take a an, an Adamant Iron Head from Excadrill as long as he's not Life Orb. We can take that. We can even take an EQ, potentially. It does, like, max 101. So that's really cool, and we can Drain Punch all that damage back. That's insane. That's so fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun using this Mean Shao set. It's going to remain so healthy with that Regenerator. That's just really nice to have. And I love that my, my opponent has a Slowking as a Regenerator Mon so that I can trace it. I can use Gardevoir as a pivot uh, into his Slowking. Like, I can uh, switch out of Hippowdon into Gardevoir and then double out into, uh, into Zapdos and have him, like, reveal Shadow Ball or something. That'd be really cool. Next up, we have, uh, no, we already talked about Rob. We have Knowledge, the Uxie. I keep changing this thing's nickname. 
Uh, I'm never really happy with a, a nickname, it seems. Uh, I don't know why, but anyway. Um, we have Psy Shock, Hidden Power Fighting, Rest, Calm Mind. I told you these sets were going to get more and more interesting. We have 248 HP, 176 defense uh, with a bold nature, 8 special attack, very important, keep that in mind, and 76 speed. Once again, you can see that we hit this 244. 244, clutch factor, faster than T-Tar. If Tyranitar doesn't come, I'm going to be shocked because it does so much work to my team. It pursuits Gardevoir if I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to knock it out, uh, if it's Scarfed. It Stone Edges Entei, it Stone Edges Zapdos, it, like, and the Pokemon that I have uh, that I'm not bringing, like Klefki, it can Earthquake, uh, it can Fire Blast that if he decides to run a special set, uh, he can Thunderbolt uh, Blastoise, like there's so much that that Tyranitar can do, there's so many different ways that he can run it. Which is why I'm prepping so heavily for it, because I'm 100% I'm sure it's coming, but it won't be able to deal with my entire team. I can tell you guys that right now. It will not be able to deal with my entire team. So, this Uxie right here is our setup sweeper. We've run a setup Uxie in the past against Trev, and it worked. We did get a lucky para and a miss from a Megahorn, but the, the set still worked. It got two kills, which doesn't seem like much, but it also paralyzed another two Pokemon in the process. So, Uxie put in a lot of work that game, and I'm hoping that it can do that again. So, we have Psyshock, Hidden Power Fighting, Rest, and Calm Mind. There's only one thing on his team that Psyshock doesn't hit. Can you guess it? It's Tyranitar. <laughs> it's a dark type. That's why we're running Hidden Power Fighting, Rest, and Calm Mind. Now, looking at his team, there's one more Pokemon that can take any one of my hits every single day, and that's Slowking. We do have an answer for that. I'll show you guys in a second. We have a lure for Slowking. But for the moment, let's just talk about this set. Remember I told you to keep in mind that 8 special attack investment? That's because without that 8 special attack, we don't, we potentially do not 2 hit KO Tyranitar with Hidden Power Fighting at plus 2. Keep that in mind. I, w I always want to be at plus 2, plus 2. This is how I'm calcing things. I'm going to be setting up on something that can't hit me hard such as Deancey, Slowking, uh, Venusaur, which is threatened by my presence, Crobat. I'm going to be setting up on those things. If I can get up to plus two, plus two, I can two hit KO the Charizard Y, I can Oko the Crobat, I can uh, Oko the Venusaur, I can two hit KO the Titar with HP Fight, I can two hit KO the Excadrill with HP Fighting, as long as he's not a physically defen uh, especially defensive variant. I can set up along the Deancey, uh, alongside the Deancey if he decides to bring a Calm Mind set. I can knock out the Halucha. There's just so many things that I just like straight up knock out. And because of the physical defense investment, like I'm not even scared of Dragonite coming in on me and starting to set up. Like it's it's fine. He can do whatever he wants. I'm just going to click Psy Shock, break his scale, Calm Mind again, and then Psy Shock twice and knock him out. So it doesn't really matter. And he can never really click a Dragon move as long as Gardevoir is around because then he's just going to lose his Dragonite. But um, this set can definitely sweep. Hidden Power Fighting, I, I initially had Shadow Ball on there instead. Um, that was suggested, or uh, over Psy Shock actually, and with a Cold Burst set to take on T-Tar. But as you guys can see, I have a switch into T-Tar, and I have three Pokemon right now that obliterate it. So I don't need to uh, fixate myself on Tyranitar so much when I have so much pressure on his T-Tar that it can almost never come in. So... That's why, and uh, like if I set up a Calm Mind uh, and he brings in T-Tar, I can, he's not going to pursue me, he's going to get hit, he's just going to crunch. I can switch into my Mean Chow, take the hit, force him out again. This is why rocks are important, not only for items, that's the big thing, but also for the chip damage, of course, as rocks usually are important for that reason. So that's the Uxie set that we're running. Rest is there, uh, I just want to explain Rest, uh, I was going to run a third move but uh, like a, th a third attack but I decided that rest might be useful because should he decide to try to calm mind up alongside me with Deancey and get a few drops on my special attack with Moonblast I might have to rest up at some point if he lets me get up to plus four plus four I th I'm pretty sure I can knock out his T-Tar from there with HP fight so he I don't think he can really risk that uh, it might be plus five plus five I'm not sure but um, if he lets me get up real like with a lot of boosts, Charizard Y is doing like 16% to me 
after like plus six plus six it's doing absolutely nothing uh crowback can you turn on me but like it's he's gonna be losing momentum by doing that he's just gonna be sacking off mons just to get off damage and i have leftovers anyway so that's not gonna do anything so if if it comes down to it and i have to like set up uh along the alongside the deancey i want to be able to do that so last but not least absolutely not least when we started prepping, when I opened the GPC front office chat on Skype, and I posted the teams, the first thing that anybody said, and it was mince, was, you want to do something really funky? And I was like, yeah, sure, go for it. And he suggested, run Solar Beam on Entei to catch the Slow King, because you'll be in Sun. And I thought that was brilliant. But I took it one step further. Let's look at the set real quick. We have 248 HP. Leftovers. Men's had suggested Assault Vest, but I want the re recovery on this because I'm gonna, I am gonna. might have to switch into rocks a couple of times if he manages to get them up, uh, which against my team is not that hard. So keep that in mind. We have Dual Status, Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, Stone Edge, Solar Beam. So if it comes down to Charizard versus Entei, I can take any hit, even in the sun, and fire back a stone edge and knock him out. If he switches into Slowking on my Entei, fearing a stone edge, I can Toxic it. And that's how Yuxi is going to beat Slowking. I can Calm Mind up on it forever. As long as he's not running Rest, he will eventually die to Toxic. So I can set up on that as well. That's where that comes in. This is what I was talking about before. I want to catch the Slow King as often as I can. The first time is going to be with a Toxic. Because Slow King can't do anything to me. Not in the sun. It absolutely cannot do anything to me. So if he goes Slow King and clicks uh, a water move, it's not going to do anything. I'm going to Toxic him. On the following turn, I can Solar Beam. And then if he thinks, oh, well, this guy's set is really weird. He has Stone Edge, Solar Beam, Toxic. He obviously doesn't have anything for T-Tar. Switches it in, and I Will-O-Wisp it. Then he's in a very bad position. Because he has two Pokemon status. Now, keep in mind that I am very aware that Deancey gets Heal Bell. And this plan can fall apart at the seams if he gets in his Deancey and he's able to Heal Bell up. But that's just the game that we play. If he preps enough and he brings that kind of Deancey, then kudos for Lars, man. I mean, he's a, he's a player in the GBA. I know he knows what he's doing, but this is the best team that I could come up with against his. I have an extremely difficult matchup. I even picked up Electrode specifically for him because I saw the T-Tar. Uh, not the T-Tar. I saw the Charizard Y. I saw the Excadrill out and the Crobat. I was like, I want something to outspeed all of these guys. An Electric type. I looked at Electrode and I grabbed it. Whereas... Um, Simisage would have actually done pretty well this game. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, guys. Simisage would have taken down Charizard and Titar on its own. It didn't have to... I didn't have to bring anything else for it. I just brought that Pokemon. And it would have done a tremendous amount of work. It gets fighting coverage. And it gets rock coverage. It can Oko both. And it gets grass coverage for Slowking. <laughs> so he can't switch that in freely. <laughs> so I kind of feel bad about letting Simisage go now. But, I mean, it was setup fodder for Halucha as well, Dragonite, uh, Venusaur just came in and sludge bombed it every single time. So, I mean, it's, it, it was okay. Uh, Crobat was also a check to it, so I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, I think having Electrode just as a presence, uh, just as a, an extremely fast electric type, kind of forces your opponent to bring a ground type, right? So, with that, with that uh, idea in mind, Lars might expect me to bring both my electric types and bring his Excadrill. And if he does that, that's one less slot that I have to worry about. One less Pokemon. Because I'll tell you guys right now, the team that I'm expecting Lars to bring is Crobat, Tyranitar, Mega Charizard Y, Slowking, Venusaur, Deancey. And potentially swap up the Venusaur for the Halucha. That, that is almost 100% guaranteed his team. The problem is he has too many things that he kind of has to bring. The Slowking has to come. That's the number one Pokemon. That's top of the priority list. If he doesn't bring Slowking, then I don't know what he's doing because he has like no 
check to my um, to my Mian Chao. If he does not bring that thing, he has zero checks to my Mian Chao. Um, Crobat is kind of a check, but I have like so many checks to Crobat, it's ridiculous. I can always switch out on that thing. Uh, he wouldn't be able to beat the combination of Zapdos and Mean Xiao if he doesn't have Slowking to pivot around with. So I feel like that has to come, and maybe his Excadrill comes. Specifically for the reason that I just said, that I have two Electric types. So I might force him into a position where he has to bring Excadrill, which would be really cool. Because then I just get to Heat Wave that thing, and Charty Berry saves me from the Rock Slide, as long as he doesn't flinch me, of course. So that's going to wrap up the team builder, guys. This is a very, very long team builder, uh, mainly because I had to put a lot of thought into it, and I really wanted to go into depth on each and every single set for you guys. Uh, this is a huge game. We're currently 4-3. and three. We have a plus 5 record, which is actually pretty good. Uh, Lars has the same record as us, uh, other than differential, I believe. I might have smacked my mic uh, a second ago. Sorry about that, guys. I just want to count up his differential real quick. Um, minus eight, and then he's plus six, plus 12, no, yeah, plus 12, he's plus 12 and minus eight, so he's plus four, we're actually one differential point ahead of Lars right now, we're plus five and he's plus four, and we have the same record, four and three, so this is going to be an extremely pivotal match, we only have four more weeks, guys, we have week eight, nine, ten, and eleven, eleven is actually Johnny, we're playing against Rise Pool, which is, uh, whew, that's going to be a hell of a rematch because we, we had a pretty, uh, pretty cool match actually, uh, back in the NBA, but, um, this is an extremely pivotal match. If I don't win this, I'm probably not making playoffs. Um, so I have to bring my A game. I have to be ready. I have to lure. I have to, uh, I'm going to have to predict Lars. Like there's, there's no world in where he just makes the obvious play every single turn. I'm going to have to predict Lars. I might have to stay in with my Gardevoir against this T-Tar. Uh, I might have to uh, stay in with my Uxie against this T-Tar. I might have to stay in with my Gardevoir against this Crobat and predict him to not have a poison move and just knock it out with Psy Shock. Like, there's so many different scenarios that I can go through in my head, but there's too many, so I, I won't keep you guys any longer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you do have any opinions on the team, uh, if you would have liked to see me bring any other kind of set, let me know. It helps. It's constructive criticism. It, it, it helps me learn as a player. Uh, Jar posted in one of my videos the other day, and he told me that I couldn't trap um, the blade with Magnazone, which is absolutely true because ghost types can't be trapped. So, like, just little things like that in the comments, guys. Extremely appreciated. Always leave comments if you have anything to say. Uh, don't, don't think it's awkward or anything. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, if you did enjoy, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.